Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in studio today. We're going to talk some sports with Val, and we're we're filming on Thursday. We're going to talk like we're filming on Friday, so uh, this is actually going to air right before the game. Uh, there's a little bit of a game coming up tomorrow night, Val, tonight, as you're watching this. We're going to be pretty busy tomorrow getting things ready. We've, <laughs> we're going to be over at the school probably most of the afternoon, so we wanted to get this filming done here so we can still have our uh, show air for you tomorrow and uh, still have uh, time to get things prepped around for the game. So, how are you, Val? Yeah, doing well. It's been a bit warm this week, and that it's weird. I, I can't remember the last time or any time that I ever had just didn't have to go to a sporting event on a particular day just, cause, just because it was too hot outside, but that's what would, what happened on Wednesday. Yeah, you, I mean, even practices, a lot of the outdoor practices were canceled or moved indoors, and um, it's hopefully not going to be as bad uh, later on this evening as, as it was uh, earlier this week, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit of a taste of some uh, some late season summer going on. After we had a really great uh, weather uh, Friday night over at uh, Wabash for the football game. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's get right into it. Let's uh, talk a little Rochester football for the uh, Zebras on the road opening up their season at Wabash. And it kind of started off pretty quick for them. Yeah, well, I'm going to defer to you, Steve, about the defense because I had been coming out. Of, I came out of the scrimmage against Winnemac raving about the Rochester defense. What did you think of the way they played defense against Wabash? Uh, whew, boy, you're putting me on the spot there. Um, mm. I thought they did a good job, but I, I just it, it's so hard. I mean, it's one of those things that's kind of still yet to be determined, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, because. I just don't think that Wabash gave uh, Rochester as good of a, a matchup as I thought they would. Mm -hmm. You know, there was there was things that they did um, that were good, and there were things that you know, if, if Wabash was maybe able to execute a little better, you know, that one pass play we'll see here in a second that uh, got called back. You know, that long passing touchdown. You yeah, know, that was you know not so good, but uh, I, I think it's still yet to be determined, kind of on on where this defense is, but. Uh, definitely uh, a good night for the Zebras on offense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for sure. And let's take a look here because it started right out of the gate, first play of the game. And the the neat thing, you know, with the, the first three touchdowns, all three of the backs got into the end zone for Rochester right out of the gate. And yeah. big number 30 started them off one play. What's well, a 3-3 three, three stack. you got to be able to fill the holes. And they didn't fill the holes. They over-pursued. And once Alex Deming cut back, he was gone. 51 yards for a touchdown, I mean, that was, I mean, Rochester just uh, ran the ball extremely well. They had 317 yards rushing in this game. You know, Wabash on their first drive really kind of had some things going. Uh, unfortunately, on that fourth and 12, right. not able to convert. And, right, got a couple first downs. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and then this was uh, Colton Favert on a sweep to the right for a touchdown, and that made it. 14 nothing. they would attack on the two-point conversion to make it 16 nothing. But, yeah, uh, Wabash didn't have any many intermediate routes. I mean, they, they did have uh, – early. I mean, they ran the slant a couple, t you know, for a first down, like right off the bat, but they didn't, didn't really have a whole lot of success on that play. This was just a tremendous play by Daughtry, and he takes it, what, I think it was going to be a 76-yard touchdown, but it was called back by a penalty. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. that, uh, that really took the wind out of the sails of the Wabash mm -hmm. Apaches. You could tell kind of – you know they they did a nice job sixteen nothing after one quarter I guess you could say was was decent but big time uh, second quarter and there's uh, Beck getting his score right again it was with that toss play where they it's not an easy play to execute but once you cut back on it I mean Rochester's got big yards all night and then again they go off the left side with Brady Beck and Xavier Vance on the left side of the line. You talked about it on the broadcast. That mm -hmm. kickout block from Brady was uh, that was <laughs> he just uh, we used to call him a slobber knocker, right? He, yeah. he just almost depleted him. And then again, more misdirection. That double handoff play was successful too, and that's another touchdown run for Brant Beck. And again, it starts off as an off tackle play one way, and then it winds up being misdirection the other way. And then that's you know that touchdown by Faverda. 
I mean, you got Alex Deming in the backfield from the one yard line. I'm sure everybody in Wa on Wabash's team is king on Deming, and then you fake the belly and then run the counter to. Retro doesn't usually run the counter from the one yard line, but they did there, and that was easy pickings. And then this one, we haven't seen that a whole lot yeah. for uh, for a few years. So Carson Pollock to Wesley Meadows for yeah. a 26 yard touchdown. Can can he, we see uh, can we see that more yeah. coming up? And, uh, you know, that was, again, again when teams have to respect your running game a lot, sometimes the tight end might run free in the in the secondary, and that's what happened there. But that so, was also a pretty throw by Pollock. Yeah, it was. was. It was right on the money mm -hmm. there. He he had a couple where he, he kind of misconnected earlier. Uh, you know, it was short out pattern, and I think he was uh, trying to, you know, maybe make it stick. <laughs> he, he really zipped it in there. and uh, But, uh, you know, you could see definite promise with that passing game. Yeah. And, and Carson... Not only like we talked about, you know, with his arm, but uh, he did some good running as well. Yeah, I talked with Ron Schaefer earlier this week, and he talked about still it's kind of the passing game's a work in progress. There, there, it's it's a lot about timing, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can see the possibilities involved, especially because just teams are going to have to give that sort of respect to the Rochester running game. Yeah, and I mean, 317 yards rushing, and that was with um, Deming. Colton Faverda and Brant Beck had one carry combined in the second half. Right, right. And it not only was... that, but Rochester had a lot of short fields too. Yeah. So three seventeen, as as good as that number sounds, it could have been even better. Right, fifty six nothing at the half, and mm -hmm. you basically you're just going running clock and and just you know right. let's get on the bus and go home kind of thing right. in the second half. And I mean, Wabash did get a, a touchdown on the second team basically and and made it fifty six to seven, but. Um, nothing really, so to speak, uh, from uh, you know against Rochester's first team right. defense. And I, I, Rochester's first team defense, I thought was just really active. And again, when you, when you're facing a spread team, what you're worried is that they're going to spread you so wide and then be able to run the ball up the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what they were counting on. They they were not able to run the ball up the middle. Yeah. Keaton Fields had 20 carries for 35 yards, and even a lot of that was against the second team defense, and that's less than two yards a carry even at that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, the Rochester run defense has just really improved. I, I I thought. I mean, I what what we saw in, against Wabash was similar to what we saw in the scrimmage. So I, I think this is a it's a very good sign. Uh, so far as you get in, now you're going to face maybe one of the best running backs you face all year this Friday, and Nate Parker. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that big game coming up here. Obviously, you know, we didn't get to play the Bell game two years ago here at Rochester, so that kind of adds even that much more flair right. to this game. And it's the first Bell game at Rochester since 2019. And, uh, you know, I have a number, there are a number of factors I think you're going to be keeping an eye on, or at least that I'm going to be keeping an eye on in this game. The first thing is, uh, what are, uh, you know, uh, how is uh, Rochester's, run defense going to react to Valley. Nate Parker had a huge game against Rochester last year. He was the best player in the field in last year's Bell game. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked with Ron Schaefer. He asked him about Nate Parker. He go, and the first word that came out of his mouth was tough. Mm -hmm. Just a tough kid. Mm -hmm. So how do you stop him? As for Valley, what are their blocking schemes against Rochester's defense? Right. Um, you know, Isaac Ramsey's the center. He's, you know, he's about 170 pounds. He's not the biggest kid. And you got He'll either have Brady back, who's 260, or Xavier Vance, who's 300, right in front of him. <laughs> so I, I talked with X after the game against Wabash. He said he got double team much of the night. Mm -hmm. So when you get Brady and X at the defensive tackle spots, they kind of put your offensive line in a bind. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you're going to have to double team one of these guys because unless you're just a unless you just have a huge offensive line. So who are they going to double team? Are they going to double team? And if so, who are they going to double team? Right, and that that's just going to make it easier for Alex Deming, you know, ro roving that middle linebacker spot to to get freed up. You're not going to have as many of those offensive linemen getting into that second level for the blocking. Right, and uh, you know, so it's it's tough. And you know, like you said, the whole the whole offensive line for Valley is considerably lighter than what we're used to seeing from a typical New Valley team. Right, Dalton Alber has gone from. You know, fullback to guard, so he's probably around two thirty, two forty. He's mm -hmm. not the, again. This, he's not tiny, but he's not right. Brady yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of teams will be like, oh, a two thirty lineman, that's great. But right. uh, you know, in Valley standards, that's right. And even the tackles, Cameron um, Mason and Phil Smith, aren't they aren't gigantic kids. They're mm -hmm. maybe in the two fifty range. I'd say, I'd say at most. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 
Right, and they'll have and the, and you know they'll have at the defensive ends. Colin Weand on one side, and then you've got Peyton Young at the other. And, I mean, those kids are good players, too. Right. Um, so uh, what will Valley's blocking schemes be? Because it's mm. a different defensive line than the than – the, even though some of the personnel is the same, the the concept is going to be a little bit different. So how will Valley's blocking schemes adjust to that? Yeah. And then the second thing is, for Valley, um, what will they do offensively – Scheme wise, that maybe they didn't do against Wawasee. Valley did beat Wawasee 23 to 12 last week. Uh, they threw 12 passes, all by Cody Eastgate. We're expecting Nate Parker, there at least, to be some Wildcat within their playbook. Mm-hmm. Just put Nate Parker in a Wildcat and have him take a direct snap and kind of survey the defense. And I, I'm fairly confident that Nate could throw a pass or two if you asked him to. He did not. He did not throw a pass against Wawasi for the record, but I think that I think that that's there, there's a feeling there that Rochester will have to get ready for that. And and we saw Wade Jones throw a touchdown pass against Wade Rochester Jones last touch- year. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you know the thing is the the weapons that uh, Cody Eastgate had on his outside mm-hmm. last year are not quite as uh, potent as the ones that they have this year. Right. The ones they have this year aren't quite as potent as the ones they had last year. Right. So I, I, now I've said that Cody Black and Brayson Smith are two kids who are really up and coming. I mean, mm-hmm. I think though they're but they're just they're kind of unproven at the wide receiver spot. Right. They're, they're really athletic kids. Yeah, but we'll see. What, well, they just haven't kind of uh, come up big in in this type of game. But that's what the that's what the Bell game is all about. Right. Some unsung heroes. Yeah. Who's going to be the hero? Yeah. Yeah. So it's and yeah. Now Wade Jones had two two touches against Wawasee for a, and he had eleven yards of total offense. He had one rush and one reception. I would imagine his hands will be on the ball more in this game. Mm-hmm. Somehow, some way, yeah. whether it's rushing or receiving or, or throwing. Throwing. Now, Stephen Moriarty said before the season he he, he sees Wade as more of a receiver this year. Mm-hmm. But even that, I mean, again, I, I think of back in Valley 10 years ago, 2012, 2013, one of their best plays on offense was just that wide, rec- wide receiver screen, bench driver to Tanner Andrews and let Tanner go to work in space. Mm-hmm. And I'd be curious to see what happens there. Yeah, you get out there against a DB and and you get a, somebody the size of Wade Jones and the strength of Wade Jones and the speed of Wade Jones. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it seems like something that they might try. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know much. We obviously week one, we don't know a whole lot about Wawa C, but you know they obviously gave Valley a, a pretty good game. So, right, you know, we'll see uh, how that translates into this week at Rochester. Right. And, the next, right, another key is going to be can Rochester stop Valley's fullbacks? We've talked so much about Nate Parker. How about Brock Durf and Grady Moriarty? Mm-hmm. Who I think had 117 yards between them on like five carries between the th- two of them. Yeah. I mean, Grady Moriarty, two carries for 72 yards. And Brock Durf had a huge touchdown run in that first half. It, it, Nate Parker didn't have a touchdown last week. It, it was it was Brock Durf who did. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the fullback is going to be, even though Dalton Albert isn't a fullback anymore, the fullback's still going to be a big weapon in that Valley offense. And also outside linebacker play. I mean, Landon Durkis didn't have a catch last week. Is he going to play a bigger role? He is one of the be- better tight ends in the area. And 6'4", 230, he is not easy to bring down if he gets the ball in the open field. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. And, you know, if you're watching this on Channel 4 at home right now and it's Friday night, you might want to just, uh, watch it later on uh, the web and get your, uh, you know, get your family and get over to the field because I, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty packed. Yeah, they've been selling tickets all week long, and uh, you know, I, I think they said they sent uh, fifteen hundred over to Valley, you know, to sell for their side, and pretty sure those were all gone pretty quick. So mm-hmm. this is going to be a big one over at uh, Barnhart Field this week. Uh, really looking forward to that. We've been looking forward to this game basically you know for four years uh, right you know it's just it's hard to believe that it's been 2019 since the last time we had a bell game at rochester high school but it was so we're so kids like deming and brady beck have never played the bell game at home yeah yeah it's even crazier yeah. it's even crazier so um let's take a quick break here when we come back we're going to talk some more rochester sports we'll talk about the volleyball team the the soccer and the the cross country and tennis here on Talking Sports with Val. Come by to In Yards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line, Valspar, 
you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyarts friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Hey, welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Friday before the bell game here, and we're going to just keep talking some Rochester sports. The Zebras boys soccer team, Val, had a pretty good week. We saw them get the win at Caston last week, picked up another win on the road against LaVille. Right, they won 2 to nothing on Tuesday, and another goal from Carlos Placencia. So he's now uh, got, what, three uh, on the year. So he's been hot, and... Uh, yeah, shout out and goal from Parker Wallace. So it's good to see uh, he's back healthy and, and really having an impact. But that was a nice win on the road against a Laville team can be, that can be pretty pesky over at Newton Park the other night. But uh, yeah, they are now uh, two and one on the season, and they uh, hosted Trinity Greenlawn on Saturday, which we imagine is going to be a pretty tough game. Yeah, yeah, Trinity. I don't know on the boys' side are they as good as the girls, but um, you know it's, it should be a, a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. You know some some good things here uh, for the uh, the soccer team. They're they're kind of putting some things together. A very very young team. I mean they're just yeah. trying to figure each other out. And right, but I think they're they're a, they're not as young as they were. I mean obviously they miss Mitchell Schaefer a lot. And right. They miss uh, R. J. Karenko, but I think they're they're kind of you know they worked a lot in terms of just improving their conditioning, and I think that that really helped them out. I, I, they there was a feeling I think I know. Talking to Coach Eric Backus after the casting game last week, he thought that that Caston got tired in the second half and they kept going. And he mm-hmm. goes, he goes, our kids didn't like me for, for much of the first couple of weeks mm-hmm. of practice because we just kept running them and running them and running them. But we kept telling them that this will pay off down the road, and I think it did. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know, obviously we've talked about it too. Coach Backus got hired kind of late in the process. You know, mm-hmm. didn't get started until like July of the summer before last year, and. Mm-hmm. You know, so getting that full work with with the team and, and and having that under your belt, and then getting the full summer this year, I think obviously has paid off. And yeah, we did uh, see a lot of that. I mean, we saw Caston. You know, there were some kids that were cramping up there in that second half of that match, and uh, Rochester was uh, you know still going full strength. So obviously, yeah. ask Argus, right? What mm-hmm. uh, what conditioning does as mm-hmm. far as playing soccer, and yeah. you know, it's it's a huge advantage when you can go the whole game like that. Right, and just. Just it's a whole different atmosphere around the team. The kids are just having fun, and I think they they realize that. I think with, with all the hard work that they put in, it's kind of it's like okay, now we can have fun because we've spent so much time together. And I think you know, that's something that the coaching staff has talked a lot about too, about just uh, even just like team bonding stuff they've yeah. had, you know, like bowling nights and stuff, just to mm-hmm. get because I think they felt that that was a little bit of an, of an issue last year too. And I think this is kind of a you know, I, th- I think they're just having a lot of fun out there, and I think you saw that uh, yeah. against Caston, and I think that's what happened against LaVille as well. Yep, so they'll have a big one. The girls are going to be playing on Saturday as well against a very good girls' Trinity team. Coach Rensberger, you talk about, uh, you know, the boys being not as young, obviously, as they were last year. Uh, the the uh, girls' team is, is as young as they've ever been. I mean, that's a very, very young squad. Right. I, I wrote an article about their game against uh, Wabash, which I was at earlier this week. They lost to Wabash 2 to nothing uh, the other day, and 13 of Rochester's 16 players are either freshmen or sophomores. They do have the two seniors and Brooke Nelson and Lily Watson, but it's and only one junior, but it's... And not only that, but even a lot of the girls who, you know, of the of that group of 13 
freshmen and sophomores, a lot of them are first-time soccer players. They never played organized soccer before. So, yeah. uh, you know, so uh, you know, Coach Chantal Rensberger, she didn't, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, I mean, she, I mean, she was very open and honest. She said this is one hundred thousand. I think she said it was one hundred thousand percent a rebuilding year were her exact words. Mm. <laughs> so, and 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 she goes, is that her way of saying that it's a rebuilding year? Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And and you know, we were talking about like Sid Hawes. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about Kendall Bradley, mm-hmm. and she goes, "A lot of our kids, they didn't realize what everything that Kendall did for this team, right? And now Kendall's gone, and now they realize what she meant to this team as a le- not from a soccer standpoint and from a leadership standpoint. Yeah, yeah. And you lose her, and now it's they're kind of struggling. And they haven't scored in three games. The good news is that we saw them possess the ball a lot more in the second half against Wabash. So they're they're making adjustments." Within the, within a game, so they're kind of understanding the concepts that she's trying to teach, and she's she's even saying, you know, you're so worried about about preventing goals, but sometimes you have to push the defense up a little bit, especially if you're down two to nothing at halftime, mm-hmm. and um, you know, because and she and she's like telling her defenders, hey, you're fast enough, you can get back, you know, don't worry about getting back, you're you're athletic enough, you're fast enough, but it's just kind of an experience thing and it's a lack of confidence thing and mm-hmm. they, they want to be there they want to help out Miley Heinzman and goal but I mean she's like hey you got to push up and you got to you know and this once you get more confidence then you start playing with that greater sense of urgency mm-hmm. you can see the talent though Miley Heinzman is a very athletic goalkeeper mm-hmm. Bria Rensberg is a very talented athlete you can see that as soon as you see her play uh, and then uh, you know uh, Aubrey Miller is is going to be a she's eventually going to score some goals she's too good not to be, to be scoring some goals yeah uh, and, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of promise. There's a lot of athletic ability, but, boy, yeah, you miss a Kendall Bradley and you miss a Macy Nelson and you miss a, yeah, uh, you know, you miss a, you know, a Williams, a Nelson, a, a Bradley. Yeah, I mean, those those kids did yeah. a lot for the team. Sid. Yeah, um, and Sid Hawes. Yeah, but it's not going to uh, get any easier. Uh, Audrey Wagner, she's going to, you know, she's such a good defender, but she – she also just such a talented athlete that she might need to score some goals eventually, yeah. and I think it's, I think it's going to come for her. Yeah, it's not going to get any easier when you got a uh, what? Are, what are they ranked this week? Trinity it's number seven, number seven, so the top and, ten, and they are in Rochester sectional. Also. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to have another big test here at Blackadder on uh, tomorrow. So, um, but hey, you know, it's it's one of those you know as long as everybody is on the same page, mm-hmm. that we're just going to have to continue to work and. You know, get better each game. Who knows what can happen? Yeah. You know, you can maybe send a statement. Right. I'm talking about some newcomers that have really impressed me, Jaden Horn and Chloe Wynn. Mm-hmm. I like to give out those two a shout out. Really impressive young players. Yeah. Uh, the girls' golf team talking about impressive. Uh, they just continue to impress. The question I have, Val, is when are the pollsters going to realize yeah. this girls' golf team is the real deal? They keep uh, beating teams and. Uh, the teams that they beat keep getting recognition, and they don't. Um, I know, you know, Coach Thomas probably and uh, you know Coach Bailey probably don't put a lot of credence in right. those polls, but right. we for the, do. For the record, that yeah, I don't think Coach Thomas and Coach Bailey lose any sleep no, over no, that. No, no, we're, they we're, don't. We're, we're the ones who point it out. I'm yeah. the one who points it out on my X X slash Twitter account. So, yeah, but I mean, it, uh, you know, they finished second place uh, at the Warsaw Invite the other day. They shoot a 357, which is a solid score. Actually, if you told me 357 would be good for second place, I'd, I'd, I'd have been a little bit surprised. But mm-hmm. you know, they did, and the only team that beat them was Homestead, and Homestead's going to be one of the favorites <laughs> to take it all at Carmel, mm-hmm. you know, later on this year. So mm-hmm. 357 is another great score. I think it's uh, you know a se- uh, 79 for Olivia Bailey, uh, Ava Thomas, and Peyton Moore were in the 80s again. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and you know Lexi Hawes had a 102. Boy, if, she, if they can, she, they can get that a 102 from Lexi mm-hmm. for, for every 18 hole round they play. Boy, they're they're going to be uh, in most every event they play uh, as long as long as Homestead isn't in the field. Right, right. I mean they ran into Homestead twice this year so far, but boy, this team's going to con- just continue to win. And you know Ella McCarter's been their fifth, and Lainey McGonis has come out, so she's given them a sixth. So they're not they're not obviously the top three of the top three, but they're not. Too, de- you know, overly dependent on Lexi to, to. Yeah, but she's been a she's been a, a nice surprise. But I having mean, said that, Lexi plays great. Yeah, coming out and just being a freshman, she's right. she's been, you know, the thing that I like about it, is she's been very consistent, mm-hmm. and she's been she's been consistent and solid. Yeah. So that's 
that's what you need, especially as a freshman, you know, to find that consistency. Yeah, and she's just she's so she's such a good athlete too. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's strong, and she can. I mean, you know, another, a Hawes that's strong. That's yeah, shocking. Yeah. We never have seen that before, have we? <laughs> yeah. So she's just and and she holds herself to a high standard. You know, she did. Remember when she shot a fifty-eight in that nine-hole match against Warsaw? She was like, I've never been that bad in my life. But I mean, she just you know, there's just high expectations that she puts on herself. So it's. It's going to be a, a, a very fun year moving forward and coming up on next Tuesday at big three-way match, Rochester, Valley, and Maconaqua mm. in a three-way, nine-hole match. That'll be at uh, Peru, Peru Municipal. Okay, yeah, Muni. So Maconaqua won the TRC each of the last two years. They beat Rochester by two strokes last year. Yeah. Uh, and they'll have the home course advantage this time. So mm-hmm. I will be curious to see, you know, uh, both Stoll sisters play golf, but I did one of them graduate? Yes. Yeah, one of them graduated, mm-hmm. so they still have Daisy Williams, and she's just a junior, so mm-hmm. uh, I will be, uh, it'll be a very interesting nine-hole match. Obviously, Valley is, uh, Valley is truly in a rebuilding year, but mm-hmm. uh, it'll be a very big match against uh, McConaughey coming up, and then another, and then uh, uh, Lewis Cass on uh, Wednesday of next week. Yeah. Oh, and, of course, they've got their home tournament, the Rochester Invite, that's coming up this Saturday. Okay. Boys tennis, they're off to a great start to their season. Yeah, they won the John Glenn invite the other day, and uh, you know they do it with you get for every match you win, you get team points, and Rochester won with twelve team points. But if you wanted to count it as a three separate duels, they went three and zero. Also, mm. they beat uh, John Glenn, Knox, and Mishawaka was the other team there. So okay. they uh, this is a team that uh, you know, I mean, with Tanner Reinerts and Robert Bazo, they've got two very experienced. Uh, kids at one and two singles, though Roberts made the move to two singles and is just, uh, you know, he he's been a good fit at two singles. He's mm-hmm. he's hard to play because he's just so tall and how do you how do you pass him when he's at the net? But and, you know some of the young kids are really impressed too, like Ashton Musselman. You know Brady Morgan saw at three singles. Brady Morgan saw some time at two doubles last year. Now he and Harrison Dunwoody, it's a brand new one doubles team and they've done well. And then at uh, two doubles, we've seen. It's kind of any two of the three, Jack Reffitt, Jonas Kaiser, and Carter Meredith. Two of the three are going to be the two doubles team. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they, they had a nice day um, at uh, at the John Glenn invite as well. So it's been kind of a light week this week. They were supposed to play LaVille on Tuesday, but LaVille canceled because they don't have enough players for a team. Mm-hmm. They were supposed to play McConaughey on Wednesday, but that was postponed to September 14th because of the heat. Mm-hmm. So Rochester won't play again until Monday. They're at Triton. Okay. Then home with North Judson on Tuesday. And then next Thursday, that big match at Peru. Uh, Peru, always a powerhouse in the TRC. And, of course, they are also in Rochester sectional now. Yeah. In fact, that's yeah. where the sectional will be played. Right. Triton will be a good one, too. Usually they have a pretty good tennis program over there. It would be yeah. a nice non-conference on the road to, mm-hmm. to see how they're going to stack up and mm-hmm. kind of get them back in the swing of things after not really doing a whole lot this week. So. Yeah. Uh, the young volleyball team continues to, uh, you know, Try to put things together. There's a little bit of a, a struggle here. They had a, a tough match the other night. Uh, Triton came to town, and, you know, we, we talk about Triton's volleyball program. I mean, boy, is Addison Veers like an eighth-year senior? I yeah. I mean, she just seems like she's been there forever, and I'm sure that uh, Coach Strasser probably uh, is going to be glad to see her graduate. And she, she, you're right, and she just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I mean, Triton did everything while well. – the other girl who impressed me was their libero, Sierra Hawley. She was everywhere, diving all over the floor. We were talking about her. And then their middle hitter, Maya Davis. You know, Again, Triton didn't list heights on their roster. <laughs> we're guessing Maya was around six feet. Yeah. Just a guess. Yeah. A six-foot left-handed middle hitter. That is tough to stop. <laughs> who hits the ball as hard as she does. They all could serve well. They've got, I mean, we haven't even talked about Macy Hensley. She gives them even more height. Um, Lena Dahl gives them even more height. So... Uh, but you know, at the same time, Rochester coach Linnea Strasser was she was complimentary of her team afterwards. She just thought, you know, our service team continues to get better. But it was it's something that they spend a lot of time on, you know. And she still even at that she has to kind of tell them, hey, you're getting it, you're getting it. You've done this at practice a lot. Just now you just have to do it in a match. Just calm, you know, you know, kind of take a deep breath and do it. But uh, it's something they've spent a lot of time on. But it's just tough. And then. A lot of the other things are just communication things that are just going to take some time with a young team. You can see Aubrey Wilson just has a lot of just natural talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, she knows where to. Uh, some of the, the decisions that she makes are just natural. You know, it takes a lot of setters. You know, years to learn. She's 
you had it figured out seemingly very quickly. Logan Honkamp, really like her spunk, her attitude. I mean, she is just not a, you know, she wants the ball being hit to her, and that's that's a good sign too. Uh, you can see that it's been an adjustment period for Audrey Bollinger. She's, you know, she, you know, when she played with, you know, Coos and and uh, Kennedy Leap and uh, Kylie Coleman. You know, she just had to play the middle, mm-hmm. and now she's being asked to do a lot more. And it's it's a little bit of adjustment you can see with Audrey, but you can see also see Audrey's got a really she's got a really nice serve. I mean, if she doesn't have the best serve on the team; it's right up there. And she's a great blocker, and she's developing as a hitter as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good things. You know, the biggest thing that I that I noticed uh, in what I saw on on uh, Monday was when they make that first pass obviously it's going to you know if it's a good pass your setter can get underneath it it's it's going to make everything go better you're going to stay in system mm-hmm. um but when there's when there's trouble from that back row and that first pass and we saw that you right. know periodically that's when things just really fall apart on you right and coach Strasser has said you know she doesn't mind some of the attacks from the back row but the only problem is that they were having so much trouble on the first pass that mm-hmm. it, you know it was Logan Honkamp who got stuck in that tough position of having to hit it from behind the the service line, right. and, and she was the one who had, was having to hit it over, and that was that just kind of led to a lot of trouble and a lot of a lot of free balls that Triton was just gobbling up. And you know, coming up here as we're filming, we we haven't uh, they they have a big match coming up on Thursday night. As you're watching, this has already happened, but we'll talk about that next week. But you know, Culver Academy is is always tough. They've won like three sectionals in a row that's right you know just a a very good uh you know volleyball program in general right but next week is the week where i think rochester's gonna have some chances to win you get two conference matches with lewis cass on tuesday night in peru on thursday uh a chance to get off to a good start in the trc yeah yeah you know i've seen lewis cass play they're they're struggling a little bit Mm -hmm. and again it's a team that you know they've got a lot of uh you know again a lot of the names are familiar from lewis cass because they play on that softball team that won their sectional but um, they don't have a lot of experience playing together, so it's. I think it'll be a very interesting, very competitive match. And then Thursday, Rochester's had a lot of good luck again. I don't think Peru's ever beaten Rochester since Peru's been in the TRC. So, yeah, I mean, both of those matches are pretty winnable. Yeah. All right, we're going to take another break. Here we'll come back. We're going to talk some uh, football for our other schools, Cast and Culver, yeah. Pioneer, Winnemac, and Valley when we get back. Criskins Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Criskins is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit CriskinsPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Criskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking some sports with Val on a bell, day, bell game evening here, getting ready for Rochester and Valley coming up next here on RTC4. And uh, let's uh, talk a little bit more about opening night of the football season. Let's go down to Caston High School as the Comets 
opened up their season against the West Central Trojans at the Comet Crater. Yeah. Comet Crater. Blair on the call for us down there. I call it Don King Field, but yeah, you can call it the Comet Crater. Yeah, I mean, West Central, uh, you know, this was a, a defensive struggle for a half. Um, and then it, in the third quarter, it, then in the third quarter, neither team could stop the other. And then in the fourth quarter, it came kind of a kind of a ball control defensive struggle again. Um, you know, again, West Central they've got some good athletes, and they you know they they're going to run some uh, some option. You know, it's a team that won ten games last right. year. I mean, they obviously you graduate some of those players, but they uh, they look like you know you you can just tell they look like a solid football team just from from looking at the kids. I guess you could say. Right, Connor Marlatt is in his third year as a starting quarterback, too. So you win 10 games, then you bring back your quarterback. That's yeah. always a good sign. And again, they were able to stretch the cast in defense. And, all, and then here come, back comes cast. And boy, Jabez Yarber is such a talented running back. Yes. I yes. mean, he's got good feet, he's got good size. And takes it outside for a touchdown there that made it 12 to 6. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, sometimes in the past you've seen a, a team put up, you know, they start off with a couple touchdowns against Caston, and next thing you know it's, you know, 30 points maybe. But uh, this Caston team fought back and made it 12-6. That's just a really nice, uh, you know, pass play, running that post pattern over the top. And Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's a really good pass by Marlatt. That's not a, not every quarterback can make that pass. Yeah, that's, that's a guy that's been starting quarterback for three years. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got that experience and that arm talent. But speaking of talented receivers, that's Grant Yadon. Really nice pass there by Gavin Mollenkoff. And I think, well, Gavin's going to, he's really going to be, be a good quarterback. I mean, he's just a sophomore. And then late, I don't know how that. Uh, that's that just a great cut. catch. Mm -hmm. That is just a great catch. And, you know, it was really good defense there by, by Kasten and just a really good catch. I mean, that's one of those you just kind of tip your hat and say, mm -hmm. you know, good job. Yeah. So West Central wound up winning 24 to 12. Caston did have over both 100 yards rushing and over 100 yards passing in the game, so it sounds like they're going to be pretty balanced when you talk about uh, Yarber and uh, Kyle Radebush in the backfield. But they've also got, uh, you know, Yadon is going to be a big uh, wide receiver. I mean, he's just going to be so hard to stop as a tight end because he's just he's so he's physical, he's strong. He can, you know, he can he can. Even if he's covered, he can just kind of leap up and grab the ball before your guy can get there. Like he can, he grabs it almost like a rebound in mm -hmm. basketball, and he is a basketball player. So yeah, yeah, I think this cast and off offense can be able to move the ball, uh, but uh, it's not it's not going to get any easier for them as they uh, hit the road and take on a uh, North Judson right. team that had, uh, had hopefully their... yeah. I'm not hopefully I'm not giving North Judson any bulletin board material. <sighs> But yeah, I mean North Judson is you know coming off a shutout against Culver the other day and just really playing well. Yeah, talk about that game a little bit. They uh, you know Culver opens up their season against North Judson at home and uh, boy, there just there wasn't really a whole lot of Culver highlights in that one. We we knew it was going to be a young squad for the Cavaliers, but uh, not able to to get into the end zone mm -hmm. uh, at all and on the, against this uh, North Judson team. Right, and I think what maybe impressed me more about North Judson is the big plays they had. A lot of fifty. You know, fifty-two yard pass, fifty-five yard run. So, I don't know if this is a, 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 a you know, North Jesse think of kind of the, the option and the kind of the three yards in a cloud of dust type team. I think this is a team that's going to get some big plays, even even without Cheyenne Allen who graduated. So, mm -hmm. and plus their defense is again, we always talk about North Jesse's defense. They're just always so disciplined, and you, you just never catch them out of position, and they just don't miss tackles either. And for the Cavs, they hit the road this week, and they go to South Central. So both teams coming in with 0-1 records. Um, you know, what What do we know? This is going to be a conference game next year. Right. Um, Coach Schaff at South Central, he's, uh, you know, he, he's always been kind of a defensive coach. They always have good linebackers who pursue really well. Talked with Austin Faust earlier this week. He talked about that. And then, you know, running backs, they've got some veteran running backs. They, I mean, South Central is just always an athletic team, but, this is always a South Central team that definitely have a chip on their shoulder. I mean, Culver beat them sixty-one to nothing in last year's sectional. They will be ready for this game. Mm -hmm. And again, if you—I know we've said this before—if you've ever been to a—if you've not been to a football game at South Central before, it is a very 
I, I enjoyed the, the football field there. They basically mm. carved it out of the woods. Mm -hmm. They carved a football field out of the woods. It's really nice and scenic there if you've never been there. <laughs> been there a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be our first game of the year every year. So yeah. uh, they had a lot of uh, – and, and South Central, and maybe not so much the last few years, but they just really seem to have that quarterback or running back that, you know, about 260. Yeah. And, and it's just kind of been their M.O. for a lot of years. They just seem to have uh, – you know, really big backfields and right. South Central lost thirty to six to Triton the other day uh, last week. They are a team that I mean, again, that was a game for about a half. Uh, so again, who 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 can score and will it take big plays or can kind of grind out drives? Mm -hmm. um, let's move down to Royal Center at the pit there at Pioneer High School and for the Panthers. You know, coming in off of that uh, two and eight season last year, trying to. Get uh, get the ship righted a little bit for Coach Barry against a uh, county rival, the Lewis Cass Kings. Uh, of course, the Kings now in the TRC, so you know they're, we're going to see a lot of Lewis Cass this year with yeah. our, our teams. But uh, you know, Cass gets on the board first, um, but Pioneer uh, they they look pretty good Friday night. Right, and you know when you think of Pioneer, you think of Wing T. But there was not there was some wing team, but there was also some option. And and, and this is just a weird play. Caden Hill is just like, okay, I'm going to take that in for a two point conversion, and Pioneer leads eight to six. But yeah, Pioneer is kicking extra points. Yeah, that was the thing. I was I, that's why I put that in there because mm -hmm. that's the first time I've even seen them line up for a two uh, mm -hmm. an extra point kick. I talked with Adam Barry. I said, when did he goes? It was kind of the week of the game. We saw Micah Rand's kick, and he was good at it. And so, uh, yeah, so they took a 15-14 lead. And there they, they converted it. I don't, yeah. The first, uh, 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 you know, we've been covering Pioneer for about six years, and that's the first time I can remember them converting a I PAT. I think it was the first time they kicked a PAT in, in six years, 2017, I think is what Coach Barry said. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be right. But again, what, Micah Rand's on the option, and then right, and then you've got Rylan Toloza, who's just a, a horse. I mean, 27 carries for 168 yards against a pretty physical, you know, well-coached defense. You know, they led 29-14. Lewis Cass got a touchdown and a two-point conversion to get it down to 29-22, but Pioneer was able to hang on. And you know, talking with Coach Barry, I said, what was the mood on the, like on the sideline? Because were, they were down 14-8 going into the fourth quarter, and he just said there was a lot of belief. Yeah, yeah. And how about Blair Burns, the right tackle? We hadn't even heard him. I didn't even ask him about that. He was kind of a guy who just you know, had a good scrimmage and just kind of emerged. He played, I think he played every play of the game. Mm -hmm. And he's just, uh, I think he's just a sophomore. So, uh, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a young team, but it's really it's gained a lot in confidence. But yeah. I think, but they also have good leadership with Toloza and Hill and Zellers. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of seniors, but they've been around and they've been through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they they've seen obviously they're kind of the tail end of, of the success that the yeah. Pioneer had with the the Lou Ellens and and mm -hmm. you know those years they had there and that game. You know, semi-state matchup. You know that they played over at Lures, and mm -hmm. so they they've seen it. They know how to right. do it, and and they've been through it. And um, but Mike Rand's eleven carries for ninety yards. Yeah, yeah, he I mean, was. That's option stuff. That's right. not uh, you know, it's not really part of the wing tee, but that was yeah. option stuff. Yeah, he's he's really I think solidified that mm -hmm. spot, and I think that uh, you know they they know. You know, Caden Hill is an, a great athlete, and he's been about everywhere in that backfield. Mm -hmm. and I think it's finally. You know, been solidified where everybody is, and mm -hmm. you know, Ryland Toloza, and you know, they they go to uh, to Winnemac on Friday, take on a uh, a Warriors team that had a rough night against Knox last week. So, you know, can they get off to a two and zero start after winning only yeah. two games all of last year? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a Winnemac team that you know struggled against Knox. They lost forty two to nothing. It was twenty nine to nothing at halftime. Um, you know, Maddox Businski had a nice game. He didn't play in the scrimmage, so we we, we weren't sure about. Uh, what to expect from him? He had a nice game, but really, the Knox defense really shut down that Winnemac rushing attack. So I think, from Coach Burgess's standpoint, uh, wanting to get some, you know, that running game going again with whether it's Businski or Jaden Jones or Talon Garner or whoever, and then uh, they can eventually get the passing game going and, and alleviate things from Max Gearhart's standpoint. Mm -hmm. But as for Winnemac defensively. You know they've got to play. You know they have to play assignment football essentially against 
maybe more so than they thought, uh, you know, two weeks ago. Because it's, yeah, the, the lineup, and it'll look like a wing tee, but there's also some option involved. And they're going to have to take away Rands, who is in addition to Tolosa. Yeah. That'll be an interesting matchup, obviously, up there at Winnemac. We're we'll going to keep an eye on that one and see how things are going there. And right. Winnemac has not beaten Pioneers since 2014. Yeah. And the Panthers, you know, if they that'd be great for them if they can get off to a 2 0 start. Obviously, Winnemac no, doesn't no, want to. Excuse me. They have not they, been. They have, Winnemac's not been Pioneers since 2021. Yeah. But um, they have not. Right. But. Uh, that was the that year. Was the Pioneer year. was. Obviously, missing a lot of players. Missing a lot yeah. of players, but so. they still, you know, they still played the game. Yeah, so right. Yeah. But that, so they only been uh, Winnipeg's only been Pioneer once since 2014. Right, right. Since so, since the conference became a conference. Right, yeah, right. The Hoosier North conference. Yeah, the, yeah. Since the, yeah, since the Hoosier North days. So yeah. Again, Pioneers had a good handle on this rivalry for the for the most part, but Winnipeg did win at home two years ago. So yeah. We'll see if that continues. I mean, you know, we were there in uh, was it 2013 when. At Winnemag team that made semi state and they really handled Pioneer at, at Rodebush Field. Uh, so I mean, but then uh, you know, in 2014, you know, Pioneer won the regional at Winnemag. So and it's been a, it's been a, whenever they play at Winnemag, interesting things tend to happen, and, right. I, and I think I think it could happen again this time. Yeah, well, we're going to look forward to that one. We've kind of already talked about Valley. You know, they win at Wawasee in right. Week One, and well, let's talk about one other thing. Gage Overby kicked three field goals against Wawasee, including a forty-six yarder. Yeah, and he's That's, just a sophomore. <laughs> and it, you know, again in these types of games, field goals, you never know when you're going to need a field goal and. Well, and since you brought that up, because that's one thing that I was going to talk about with Rochester, um, you know, you talked about Parker Wallace, uh, you know, being healthy with uh, being the keeper for the soccer team. He also kicks, but they did right. not kick a PAT against Wabash. They went for two every time. So yeah. was that just, uh, you know, we, we want to keep him fresh kind of thing? or um, I think it was a percentage play. I think I just think Coach Schaefer thought – Two two points and we, we'll go. We, yeah, well, if we get if we get two points more than fifty percent of the time, it's yeah. it's a good percentage play. Okay, them going seven for seven. That's that that was impressive. Right. Parker Wallace kicked a thirty five. Was it a thirty five yard field goal at Valley last year? Yeah, was it? Was that, a thir- it was yeah. A, yeah, it was a thirty plus yard field goal as right. I remember, and that was the longest right. of his career. Yeah, was that right before the half? If I remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So. And uh, you know, kick off. You know, uh, Wade Jones is a very good punter. I mean, like, might go to college to punt. Yeah, that good, hmm. and uh, but Rochester's kickoff coverage I thought was really good last week as well. There was one uh, unnecessary roughness, roughness penalty, but otherwise Rochester kept Wabash from the thirty yard line most every time. Yeah, we'll see if that holds too, because you know that was one of the things last year that they did kind of struggle a little bit mm. with the special teams. Yeah, so if they can nail that down, right now Rochester has not punted yet this year. Yeah, they didn't need to punt, so we will see. I, I believe. Carson Pollock is going to punt if they punt. Mm-hmm. I would, if I would imagine they're going to punt at some point. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of the same way going into the game last year. They, I don't think they had punted maybe once or twice going into the, right. the Bell game last year. Of course, it was Week Six, so it was yeah. a little different. But and then Alex Briggs got a lot of, got a lot of playing time. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take a quick break here, and uh, we'll come back and we'll talk some uh, some sports from our other schools here, going down through the list and. When we get back, talking sports with Val on a Bell Game Eve here at Rochester. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. 
We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to healthcare needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide... Welcome back here. We are talking sports with Val and... Let's talk some Argus soccer, Val. Saturday was a big day for the uh, the Argus boys soccer team as they celebrated year number 60 of uh, having a soccer program there at Argus. And I know you wrote uh, an article about that on the blog. And I put a little side note in there because you were a little bit too modest. Uh, you you were also one of the speakers uh, who talked about the uh, the history of the Argus soccer program. And you know, I'm sure that was a great honor to be asked to, to speak at a you know an occasion like that with, you know, such honorees as you know Eugene Snyder, who obviously the field is named after and won three state titles, and right. Todd Vanderweel, who won a state title. I mean, wow. And Tim, yeah, Tim Van Dyne was there, who did mm-hmm. a, I mean coached the program for what 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, <laughs> and when they asked me to speak, I was just like, don't have me go after Eugene Snyder, right? Because, and so they had they had me go right away. And I, you know I, what I talked about in my speech was I just talked about again. I, I first of all I told them I've only been covering them for 19 years, so I missed the first two thirds of Argus Soccer. But I just said that um, the way this program appreciates its history is so important. I mean, Wade Odell was there. He graduated in ni- 1965. Right on that first team. On that first, yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, they you know you know uh, Roger Grossman was there, and all these. You know all these guys from the '80s and uh, Bruce Bruce Jennings was there, so I mean, they get, you know, from the '70s, so it was guys from the '60s, '70s, '80s, mm-hmm. '90s. So it's like all these guys were there that represented the history of the program. And to the current players, I think even some middle school kids were there. So the future of the program was there. And I, I just talked about um, the kind of the you know if you're if you're on the field for Argus Soccer, you're on there, you're out there on the field for a reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, because they just don't they just don't throw people out on the field for whatever. I mean, it's a, you know your spot is sacred because they appreciate their history so much, mm-hmm. and they 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 appreciate what you do as you know how you represent the community as well as how you play soccer. And uh, yeah, it was it was I was just so honored to be there, and it was it was great hearing a lot of some of the old stories uh, from from Todd Vanderweel and Tim Van Dyne and Eugene Snyder and Coach. Uh, Ed Miller was there. He was an assistant coach under Eugene Snyder back in, when the program started mm-hmm. in the mid '60s. Yeah, he, he yeah he's got a he's got a lot of stories. He was he really because <laughs> it's funny. Eugene Snyder gets to me. He goes, I didn't even know how to spell soccer. I was like, was is there one C or two C's <laughs> when he took over? One of winning three state championships though. Well, yeah, and, and you know you were talking earlier about uh, Coach Backus running his kids. I mean, it was legendary what uh, what Coach Snyder would do. I mean, two a days, and they would run. You know, start off practice with with a ten mile run. Yeah, twice a day. Right. You, yeah, you heard those. Yeah, you heard those stories. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, these these kids today, I, I could imagine if you tried to tell them, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna practice twice a day, and you're gonna start off with a ten mile run. Yeah. And I think it was a timed run too. They had to come in under a certain time, or you know, they had to keep going. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was originally started as you know, something to keep the basketball players in shape, mm-hmm. give them something to do in the fall. And they said, hey, let's try this. And I think the first year it was uh, Argus and CMA. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, then it just kind of obviously has grown in popularity throughout the state. But, uh, yeah, 60 years, that's a, you know, a huge thing. Nobody else in the state besides CMA can say that. Right. And, I mean, you know, not only do they have you know cake and cookies, but there was also like a, a this huge booklet that basically tells you every season in Argus history what mm-hmm. happened, yeah, and who were you know every individual honor every Argus soccer player has ever received, yeah, from RTC Player of the Year to uh, oh, All wow. State. Wow! <laughs> so <laughs> we made the book. We made the book. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Spencer Vanderwill, who's Coach Vanderwill's son, who obviously graduated from Argus and played. And mm-hmm. he played collegiately. Uh, he does a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he's, you know, instrumental in oh, keeping Ta- that history going. Todd Vanderweel, thank the credit his son for just about all of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is a great kid, great family, great. You know, the whole community, just uh, what they do. And, right. Yeah. In fact, Spencer started his own website for 
covers kind of high school soccer throughout the state. I think it's inhssoccer.com. Or, yeah. Uh, we keep hoping that he'll turn that into a, a scheduling site as well, like John Harrell does. Yeah. That would be uh, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've always, you know, John Harrell does great things for football and basketball, but uh, we we miss it in the sports that he right. doesn't cover because it's so nice. Right. I mean, and the Vanderweel family, they are great ambassadors for soccer throughout oh, the state, yeah. not just in Argus. Yeah. Yeah, they are for sure. And the Stones and the Vanderweels, and I mm-hmm. mean, those are legendary names. And yeah. of course, you, you mentioned Jennings, obviously, you know, what they did in mm-hmm. not only uh, basketball, but in soccer as well yeah. in the late 70s and early 80s. I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, and there's been Odell's, obviously, since the very beginning, playing yeah. soccer and basketball in Argus. Mm-hmm. So. Good stuff there. Unfortunately for uh, Coach Vanderweel, the the product on the field wasn't quite as good. I guess during Northwest during the game, uh, took on an Oak Hill team. Right, they lost. Um, they lost one to nothing, Oak Hill. But that, I, you know, Coach Vanderweel was pretty happy with the, kind of the effort. There was uh, the uh, Oak Hill has the two Elzinga brothers, E L Z I N G A. Mm-hmm. The freshman Elzinga was the one who scored the only goal of the game. His, his brother is a junior, though. He's he's their best player. Mm-hmm. He's the one where you, you're going to have to mark him as soon as he gets off the bus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, uh, Coach Vanderbilt was very happy with the effort. And you can see some of these kids are really improving. You can see Ben Zahm has really improved. Mm-hmm. You can see Kyle... Kyle Penn was playing with a broken wrist or broken hand or broken thumb or something. He had a big cast on his hand. You can see, though, he's really improved. Um, you can see Luke Stoltz is going to be – he is tough to stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see Elias Ricosi. He's you know, he's getting better and better. I mean, mm-hmm. you can see these young guys um, just continuing to improve. You can see um, the two Pets brothers, uh, Ethan and Yoan. I mean, they're – you know, and and then so your Crace is another year more experienced in goal. I mean, right. you know, the goal he gave up that was just a really great shot by uh, Jake Elzinga. So it was, a, it, you know, it was, a, it was a solid performance. But then they go and they lose to Trinity Greenlawn two to one. So now zero and three on the year with losses to Warsaw, Oak Hill, and Trinity Greenlawn. But uh, you know, uh, again, I, I I think there's I think there's more optimism now than there was a year ago at this mm-hmm. time. Playing Faith Christian tonight, that's a you know, a team that's really built their soccer up here over the last few years as well. Right. Faith Christian's the team that beat Argus in last year's regional. And this is a program in the Lafayette area that's now one of the top programs in the Lafayette area, regardless of school size. I mean mm-hmm. they just play great soccer and they've got a lot of weapons and you know, they were kind of the the little team that could, you know, about uh, five ten years ago, now right. they're just another just a powerhouse. They're program. just the team that could. Yeah, yeah. they're the team that is, and the, yeah, they're the team that is. Yeah. yeah. So you know, when we talked about this last year, obviously, you know, the schedule is just brutal as far as playing quality competition right. oh, for and Argus. Sean Richard too. We need to talk about him. I mean, yeah. Sean is just. You know, I, I guess the first thing I think of when I think of Sean is his defense, but I mean, he can play in the, in the midfield as well, and mm-hmm. and I mean, he's. You know he can help build up play and, and get the ball past midfield as well. We need to yeah. talk about Sean. I, I know he won a big uh, academic award at Argus too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I don't remember what it was, but I did see that picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think it was a national award of some sort. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, so doing it on the uh, field and uh, in the classroom yeah. as well. Yeah. So congratulations to him. So uh, girls, you know, we talked about this a lot. Obviously, with the graduations, you know, they've been struggling, but uh, they're not doing too bad. Right, you know, they beat Plymouth last week 5-zip, but then another uh, loss. I mean, they, let's see, they lost to uh, Elkhart Christian, um, uh, was it the other day? And then they, you know, they've got the Argus invite at home uh, coming up. Did they up. lose to No, here? excuse me, excuse me, they beat Elkhart Christian 4-3. Yeah, four I thought to, they thought 4-3. Excuse three, me, they yeah. beat Elkhart Christian 4-3. They were down 3 to nothing, came back to win 4-3. Lily Hines had two goals. Sorry about that. Yeah, they won that game four to three, so now they got some confidence behind them, um, and uh, you know, and that was after they had lost to Northwestern four to nothing. So they're two and two on the year. Yeah, they lost to Trinity Greenlawn, beat Plymouth, uh, North lost Western to Northwestern, Saturday but beat Elkhart, but beat Elkhart yeah. Christians. So they're two and two. Okay, we got that straight. I, I was getting the <laughs> boys and girls confused. So they're yeah. two and two on the year. Now they got the Argus invite at home on Saturday, John Glenn, uh, Hanover Central, and Fort Wayne Southside are coming to town. So hmm. this will be a good matchup. John Glenn is a solid girls' soccer program. I don't know too much about Hanover Central or Fort Wayne Southside. Hmm. but No. 
Uh, I imagine I imagine both of those schools are. I imagine Hanover Central is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Fort Wayne Southside, but uh, you know, again. Uh, I know they've had some good basketball, girls basketball yeah. over there, but I don't know anything about their soccer. Right. Um, you know, that this is an Argus team that's pretty young. I mean, they, you know, they got, I think we talked about nine freshmen. Haina Willis has scored with a couple, three goals already this year, so mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how they continue to do. Yep. Uh, Kasten, uh, you know, I guess we could talk a little bit about the graph on, on Saturday because we can talk some Kasten cross country. Let's just talk about the, the graph invitational as the, all of our teams – Kind of got uh, kind of got going with the cross country season, right? Edison Byron finished thirteenth overall on the boys' side, so he continues to. It looks like he's going to be one of the top runners in the year. He ran eighteen minutes on Saturday. I would imagine he's going to get faster as the season progresses. Uh, and then you know they've got some guys after that who maybe are a little bit lesser experienced guys like uh, Kane Finky, uh, Maxwell Summers uh, mm-hmm. to. But not not really a pack team. It's going to be Edison, who's going to be kind of the king of the pack, I guess, for most right. of the year. Uh, and then on the girls' side, uh, you know, um, it's still kind of a young team. Uh, the girl who was the number one runner the other day, this was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, Miley Rude um, ran, I think, and I think she ran a PR. So you know, we saw Miley on the softball field a little bit last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's continuing to gain some confidence. And, you know, Alexa Lau is the number two runner. She's a sophomore as well. Mm-hmm. So Camilla Hernandez Rios is the number three runner. She's a sophomore. Jada Aguilar, she's a sophomore. And then you got Brianna Mesquita, who's a senior. Yeah. So I think the top four runners on Caston's girls team are all sophomores. Yeah. Well, we also had, uh, you know, Pioneer was participating in there as well. They had some good results. It was great to, to see. Uh, Violet Montgomery back out and, and running. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, it's great Violet, to see. Right. Violet's by far the most experienced Pioneer girl, and they've got some girls like Kylie Jamerson mm-hmm. uh, behind her. As for the Pioneer boys, boy, uh, their big three of Carson Meyer, Jackson Baker, and Leighton Dot all finished in the top 12. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's going to be, and all, all went under 18 minutes, which is, you go under 18 minutes the first meet of the year in August, you're fine. I mean, yeah. you're, you're more than yeah. fine. and. This team will only get faster as time progresses. Yeah, um, a little bit of inexperience, maybe beyond those top three. Yeah, Valley had a, a runner that did pretty well over there as well. Chesney Miller was second overall among girls. She ran nineteen fifty two, broke her own school record. But this is the first time Chesney's been under twenty minutes, I believe. Is it? Unless, yeah. Now we haven't gotten the results from the Goshen meet or the Warsaw meet, so we're just kind of guessing. But I believe that everybody said that was a. I was told I was told it was a school record, so 1952 for Chesney. So how many times is that? Like the third or the fourth time that she's broken her own record? She broke the record, and then she's broke rebroke oh, it like three times. She's bro- I mean, she broke the record her first race as a freshman, and now she's a senior. So I think, oh, I think it's double digits now. Oh wow, that I, many times. Yeah, that many. And times. then and then she's also uh, has track records that she keeps breaking, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And remember, Hannah Moore from Northwestern won with 1923. Hannah Moore is one of the better runners in the state. Oh, my I mean, gosh. Yeah, yeah. So for Chesney to finish second behind her, that she's doing very, very well. Yeah. I mean, and, and it, you know, I mean. I uh, saw her run at sectional. Hannah yeah. Moore, oh, my gosh. She just blew that two-mile away. Right. Um, Chesney Miller uh, beat Afton Griffin. Mm-hmm. Afton Griffin was third. Yeah, yeah. And from Lewis Kazan, we we're, we know how good Afton Griffin is. Right. So. Uh, for Chesney to be running that way, she is just in top form right off the bat. And, mm-hmm. I mean, she is going to be a contender for state and if, if she keeps running like this. Yeah. Afton, I mean, I didn't realize she, she ran cross country as well. I mean, obviously she's a talent on the, you know, 100, 200, 400. Right, she's a sprinter in track. Right, but yeah. right. But she runs cross country as well. So, Of course, Chesney runs the 400 as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Did, we talk, get, did what, we talk Rochester down there? At the graph? Uh, no, we didn't. But yeah. you know, let's talk about Rochester's yeah. got Rochester ran two girls in the girls race, so they're not going to have a complete team this year. Allison Calloway and Brooklyn Chandler are the two girls. They hope to get Cadence Bradley back. She's been dealing with an illness, so that'll give them the three uh, later on. Uh, Allison ran twenty two fifty four on Saturday, on Saturday, so that's a very good sign to start the year. Twenty uh, third overall, only the, t- the top twenty got ribbons or medals, so Allison just missed the m- missed getting a ribbon. Uh, or a medal. Uh, Brooklyn Chandler, that was her first cross-country race. On the boys' side, Rochester had two kids in the top 20. Wes Steininger was 17th. Grant Bailey was 18th. 
West ran 1813, Grant ran 1815, so they were right behind each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the rest of the team, then you got kind of the next two were Lane Shank and Reese Johnson, who have been doing it for a few years now. Boy, Lane, Lane ran 1902. I, I think it might have been a PR. He's, he's probably going to get under 19 minutes at this point. Right. And Lane has just improved so much. He's just a kid who just has so much enthusiasm for running. And, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're happy to see him succeed. Reese is a kid who's also just put in a lot of time. and. Has really uh, done well. And the last two are Leandro Javier and Hayden Shuck. Leandro's a freshman, Hayden's a sophomore. They're kind of two newcomers to to cross country. But I think you know it's a Rochester team that uh, they're not going to contend for team you know to win the TRC or stuff like that. I mean, McConaughey and Wabash look like they're going to be the the heads heads of the pack in the TRC. But I think for for Wes and for for Grant, I mean, they're going to have real chances to to advance individually. Yeah. Once we get to the state tournament. Yeah. Well, I know we're bouncing around a little bit here, but I, I figured since we were talking about the Graf Invitational and there were so many of our runners down there, yeah. we might as well just talk about them all all in one shot. But yeah, um, let's go back to Caston here for a minute. Uh, the volleyball team, you know, had a had a really good day on Saturday at the Tomahawk, and and they've got a, uh, right. a huge match that will already have been played by the time you see this. But uh, you know, they have uh, Pioneer coming to town for the conference matchup. They already met once for the uh, county. Now right. the conference matchup coming up. Right, Casa finished fifth place uh, at the uh, Tomahawk Invite. They went three and one on the day. Their only loss was to Wabash, and that was in three sets. Wabash went fifteen thirteen in the third set. Yeah, and three sets. That's best two out of three. Right, in and, a and a best two out of three yeah. set match. Yeah. Um, and they're you know they're getting you know Shaley Yadon and Maddie Douglas are two players we hadn't seen much of them, but they did play in the uh, Tomahawk Invite. And they played pretty well. I mean, Shaley's going to give them some height mm-hmm. uh, at the, you know, at the, in the front and the front line at middle. And if she can play middle, then that can allow um, Isabel Scales to kind of move around. I mean, both started at in the middle, but kind of, you know, she can play the wings too. Now she can play outside or opposite. And uh, you know, you want Bell taking some swings. The more swings, the better usually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but boy, Macy Hinderleiter and Alexa Finke are just playing great volleyball. I mean, they are. Mm-hmm. They're hard to stop, and their 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 block is just so. It's just such a tough block because it's just it, it never it never backs off even even as they rotate. I mean, that's all. If it's not scales, it's Finky. If it's not Finky, it's Hinderleiter, or it's mm-hmm. two of them. Mm-hmm. So they're very good. And then you got that two setter system with McKenna Middleton and Annie Harsh. They're both doing a great job. I think I think Annie had thirty five assists, and McKenna had thirty four for the tournament. Mm-hmm. So the two setter system is something they figured out. Carly Summers keeps coming coming along, so that, you know that's nice to see. Along with Yadon and Maddie Douglas is kind of the the setter of the future, if you want to call right, her that. Right. You can just tell Maddie is she's a she's athletic and b she's really heady out there. She's yeah. she's smarter than your the typical freshman. Her, well, she's a coach's kid, yeah. not, not a volleyball coach's kid, but a basketball coach's kid, and and you know that's just one of those things. You've been in the gym basically your whole life, and yeah. You know that that stuff kind of just uh, comes natural to them. And, yeah. Uh, Wait, Hinderleiter. I mean, she can hit. She can hit opposite and outside, and mm-hmm. there's just not a lot of kids who can do that mm-hmm. in our area. Well, I think Finky and Hinderleiter both just. I mean, they have that jump out of the gym kind of uh, ability. Yeah, that too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're tall and, and they can jump. So yeah. you know, it's going to be interesting too. Like I said. So, yeah, but again, that's a Wabash team that won their two way sectional last year, and then. And then Caston rebounded to beat Peru and North Miami, a 3A team and a 2A team, and then they beat Peru again mm. at Tigerina on Monday in their regular season matchup. So yeah, yeah. They got them 8-1, and one, so. Yeah. And like I said, they have that big matchup. Uh, you can go back and watch on RTC4 uh, the matchup between Caston and Pioneer, which by the time you see this will already have happened, mm-hmm. but we haven't, uh, we haven't got a chance to see it yet because mm-hmm. it hasn't happened as we're filming here on Thursday. But... Um, yeah, so I mean the Comets just you know they continue to you know come off of that successful softball season and you know it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what this group can do this year if mm-hmm. you know what they can do in all three sports. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes two of us. Yeah, and you know Culver. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Culver volleyball team because they. 
you know that that matchup with Caston, they they took them to to five sets. They showed a lot of grit. That match went over two hours. Yeah, I mean they showed a lot of grit, and that they pick up a big win uh, on Wednesday against Tri Township. Uh, yeah, across. it's been it, yeah, it's been kind of this up and down. You know, they they, they lose the heartbreaker to Caston, then they go to the John Glenn tournament. They face John Glenn right off the bat. They lose, then they bounce back. They beat South Bend Riley. They beat South Bend Career Academy. And then they lose a tough one at the end of the day to North Judson to go two and two on the day. And then they go to and then this is, you know, kind of a road trip week. Monday at South Central, Wednesday at Tri Township, and Thursday at West Central. I mean, that's a lot of time on a school bus in a week. Mm, right. They they lose to a South Central team that's already ten and oh. Oh. They are just an outstanding two yeah. A team. Well, that's that that that's mm-hmm. going to be a hard team to get out of that, uh, yeah, you know, t- tournament. Right. But then they bounce back and get a nice win over Tri Township on on Wednesday, twenty five nineteen, twenty five thirteen, twenty five nineteen. So, uh, this is a team they've got a the the roles are more defined. The kids know what their jobs are, and they've got, but they're also at the same time they're kind of, and they're more confident in their roles. Grace Sieber is a terrific setter. Livy Overmeyer has made a great improvement. Ashley Pugh can set mm-hmm. um, as well. And Bryn Barron is one of the top players in the area. And and Shelby Olivares, I mean, she had 30, 39 serves received against Caston. You know, she's you know she, she is very comfortable in that libero spot. You start thinking about that Hoosier North Conference with uh, volleyball this season. I mean, Culver is solid. Triton is really good. Pioneer is really good. Caston is really good. I mean, what a volleyball conference they have in yeah. that Hoosier North this year. I'm, I think North Judson will be decent yeah, at least. North Judson mm-hmm. should be right in the mix, too. Could you imagine? I know South Central is only joining for football, but could you imagine if you threw South Central into that as yeah. well? Uh, mm-hmm. That'd be crazy. And, of course, North Miami is going to be right. in there. Yeah. And the Porter County Conference is a great volleyball conference. So Right, yeah. right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, what a what a conference race that it's going to be. And, yeah. and we're going to find out a lot yeah. uh, tonight. Yesterday, however you want to say it, that Caston and, and Pioneer matchup. Right, but uh, Culver at West Central will be a good match. I think. I think you know it'll be a good another good barometer to see where Culver's at. Yep. Yep. Um, let's. And by the way, Caston volleyball is going to Tri County for a tournament on Saturday after the Pioneer. You know, we're so focused on Pioneer, but mm-hmm. they got to bounce right back ahead to Tri County on Saturday, which should be another very competitive tournament. Right. Let's take another quick break here. We'll still come back. We'll talk uh, some Culver soccer when we get back. Okay. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrien can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Hi, welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Bell Game Eve here in Rochester. We're talking some Culver sports here. Let's go over and uh, talk about the uh, soccer teams real quick. Um, the girls' team, I think, off to a nice little start. Right. I mean, the big the big news this week is Culver is ranked in girls' soccer. They are ranked number 19 in Class 1A. Uh, the bad news is that in their first game as a ranked team, they lost to Bremen three to nothing. Uh, that's not a that's not a huge. Um, I guess you don't want to hang your head over a loss to Bremen. I mean, we saw that team. Right. Young team last year, and and they just seem to keep getting better. Right, Bremen beat Culver in last year's sectional, so this was we, this was definitely I think a, a game that the Culver girls had circled. But 
the game was, you know, it didn't go well. It was, it was after uh, Giselle Villegas had scored, I think, 12 goals in the first three games of the year. You know, they had gone through uh, beating North Miami and Peru, but, uh, you know, struggled against Bremen. So, uh, again, the game against DeMott Christian, which was scheduled for Thursday, was postponed because of the heat. So they've got a game against South Bend Riley on Saturday. All right. Boys, uh, boys team under – Great to see Cassidy Banks back too. Yeah. Boys team under first-year coach Adam Neese. Of course, his brother A.J. is the girls' coach. Uh, how are the boys doing? Yeah, we haven't heard much from them this year. We'll get on to them, but uh, no games this week for the, the Cavs. No games for the Cavs. All right. Uh, they, again, and their, their schedule kind of starts off slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll pick up later on. But they've got, they've got 15 or 16 boys. So okay. that's, that's a good sign. Not as slow as it did last year where they had to basically take a first month off because they didn't have enough kids. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about Pioneer football. The Pioneer volleyball team, uh, they went down to Franklin Central. They went 2-2 two and two on the day down there. And, you know, obviously the big matchup for the conference at uh, Caston on Thursday, and then they go to LCC. I mean, just, boy, what a brutal schedule yeah, for them to start off. Yeah, if you the Franklin Central tournament was tough, this tournament's even tougher you got Andrean and, and LCC in the mix, so, I mean, they're going to have to be on, but I like like Coach Nye said, I'll take my losses now, and then yeah. they'll, get better, they'll get better over time. Yeah. But, again, nice win at LaVille in their conference opener on Tuesday. Yeah. Won that one and three. So we'll see how that again, game. Um, you know, board just, Brooklyn board just keeps getting healthier and right. just a lot of depth and talent on this team. Yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't the the healthiest start that they've had. You know, Brooklyn obviously coming off of that knee injury, so she's working her way back into the lineup. And you know, Liz Rance uh, has she made it back into the lineup? I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. Yeah. So when they get when they get a hundred percent and they get those kids together, and mm-hmm. uh, I think they'll be fine. I saw uh, Mackenzie Rogers got her one thousandth assist mm-hmm. in the game against Laville. So congratulations to her. She's going to be heading west. After the uh, conclusion of the school year, to, yeah, to play Vanguard, some volleyball. Vanguard University in Costa Mesa, California. Yeah. Not, not that I know where Costa Mesa is, but I'm. Sh- I do know where Costa Mesa is. It's in Orange County. It's about okay. an hour, hour drive yeah, south of Los LA. Angeles. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I don't have much desire to to go to California. I can't uh, imagine why I would want to go out there, but. Um, yeah. So the Panthers, you know, obviously, good luck on uh, Saturday, a big tournament at LCC. Mm-hmm. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, and we can also uh, take a look at that uh, matchup with Caston as it'll be on the air by the time this uh, show airs. Uh, Tipkin Valley, their uh, their volleyball team is, uh, you know, right having having some nice moments. Why were they playing well? You talk about how the Culver volleyball team did at the John Glenn tournament. Well, the team that won it was Valley, mm-hmm. who went four and zero on the day, and uh, I think beat uh, John Glenn as part of that. And then they get, then they start off this week. They beat a Goshen, a four A team, at home. And then on Tuesday they travel to Winnemac and win that one in three twenty five sixteen twenty five sixteen twenty five eighteen. Boy, this team's on a roll. And they you know even though it's even though it's kind of junior dominated. I mean it's kind of but I mean they uh, the one girl who I think has made a big impact already is Ava E Golf, who is a move in from Warsaw. Boy, that she gives them some height in the middle. And boy, is she a dynamite hitter as well. Mm-hmm. And to go with Colette Blackburn and Michaela Costello, boy, Valley, they can come at you in a lot of different directions with their offense. And then uh, Avery Wagner is just a terrific setter. And, boy, the, the other girl, and you know, I'm so happy that she's back and playing well, Erica Henderson. Remember, she hurt her knee in the Rochester match, was it two years ago? Two years, yeah. Tore yeah, her I ACL. That. Yeah. And that was awful, but she's back and she's playing really good volleyball yeah. and is one of the better servers on the team as well, in yeah. addition to playing libero. Yeah. So they, uh, yeah, a nice start to their season. Uh, first year head coach, but uh, a lot of familiarity, yeah. obviously, still there. First year of a second stint, right? Yeah. Right. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, Val- yeah, Valley playing well, and uh, I'm trying to see here. They they go to Plymouth for the Powerball tournament on Saturday. I don't know who's in that field, but uh, should be pretty challenging. Again, Valley's one loss was to Plymouth mm-hmm. in five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be a chance to maybe get some retribution there yeah. if they get a chance to meet up with the Pilgrims. So, yeah. uh, how's the tennis team doing over at Valley? Uh, you know, again, pretty. You know, with the exception of Cameron Manuel at one singles, it's a pretty young team. Tristan Reagan has moved from doubles to singles. Uh, DeAndre Hamilton's a newcomer; he's playing three singles. Uh, the doubles teams are kind of all new. Uh, the two Malat brothers are both playing doubles, though they're not. They're not team. They're not doubles mates. One's playing. Will is playing one. 
doubles and the uh, younger brothers playing two doubles. So uh, Ian Cooksey, we've seen Ian on, on the basketball court. He's a good tennis player as well. I've seen him. He's he's tall. He's got a really good, nice volley at the at the net. And so uh, yeah, um, a, a team that's gonna it, it might take some it might take a while just because they're they're very young after Cameron Manuel. Mm-hmm. But Cameron Manuel is playing really well. He had that win over Reinerts from Rochester the other day, and I, I think Reinerts has gotten him a few times in the past. So that had to feel really sweet for Cameron Manuel. Yeah, uh, you know, a tough a, a lefty. You know, mm. good player. Yeah. We've seen Cameron on the baseball field as well. Mm-hmm. So we talked about uh, cross country, obviously, with the Jacob Graf, you know, getting their season underway, obviously, with Chesney and, and her success there. Uh, the golf team for Valley, obviously, you know, they graduated a ton last year, very young, and yeah. just trying to find their way here this season. Right, McKenna Rentschler, Lucy Hayden kind of leading the, leading the pack. Yeah. Um, how about down at, uh, or over, I guess, from here, over at Winnemac? You know, the, the volleyball team, uh, obviously, you know, they're, they're young as well. And Coach Heather Caston trying to, you know, put some things together there. But I know yeah. they've had a little bit of a struggle here to start the season. Right, they've only, I think they're 1-9 and nine in the year. Coach Caston is really, I mean, she's very enthusiastic about her kids, uh, but just struggled a bit. You know, I thought, they, I thought they'd have a chance against Delphi, but lost against Delphi in that Tomahawk tournament. I thought that would have been a good matchup for them. And you know, then and then they run into a valley team that's pretty experienced and pretty pretty athletic. Um, uh, Link, uh, this would be uh, Piper Link. Piper plays volleyball. Olivia plays golf. Piper Link's been playing pretty well. Uh, Chloe Roush, um, Reagan Caston have been playing pretty well for Winnemac, but mm-hmm. uh, struggling against some tough competition. Yeah. Um, I'm going to probably say her name wrong, but uh, Bianca. Huizar? Yeah, I think that's uh, how you say her name. Yeah. I, I hope we're not, yeah. Uh, continues to do really good things there on the golf course, too, as well for Winnemac. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, she's out of 35 for nine holes. She's already broken the 18-hole school record twice. The interesting thing about Bianca, she's also like the star 100 and 200-meter runner on the track team yeah. in the spring. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen a, that combination before. Yeah, and golf and sprinting. Yeah, hmm. but she's, yeah, she's just having a fantastic year. And then... Uh, You've got uh, Olivia Link, and then you've got behind her, and you know. So I think I think you know in the Hoosier North, I think Winnemac's going to be the favorite still because of Bianca. I mean, mm-hmm. she's that good. Yep. Uh, no tennis at Winnemac. Uh, did we talk any Winnemac cross country? They were, they were not. We should the... be talking. Yeah, we should because their girls are just outstanding. I mean, their girls team finished third at the at the Jacob Graf invite. Oh, they were at the Graf. Right. Okay. I mean. And I, in fact, uh, I talked with Maggie Smith. She plays golf and runs cross country. I asked her how she does that. <laughs> she goes, uh, "Yeah, I play golf and then I go home and then and then I get my run in." So it's <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. She's a five sport athlete: yeah. golf and cross country in the fall, basketball in the winter, track and softball in the spring. She's only doing one fall, uh, one winter sport. Only one winter sport. I mean, come on, <laughs> you could wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's that's crazy. So. Yeah, golf and, and cross country. I mean, you yeah, know, and Maggie's the number one runner on the cross country team. But they've got yeah. Cadence Croft, they've got uh, Cadence or Candace Croft, Cadence Hoover, uh, and then the two Wegner sisters, Kelsey and Avery. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's some. I mean, there's some good kids who just can't get in the top seven at Winnemac at the girls team. They're that good. Yeah. On the boys side, uh, Logan Friedel is having a nice year. Nathan Pierce Schalski is the solid number two on that team. Yeah, by Friedel. Yeah, Colby graduated. It's uh, a uh, yeah. younger team. Yeah, yeah. The, the the boys' team is much younger than the mm-hmm. girls' team in uh, at Winnipeg. Yep, that was good stuff there. So we got a few minutes left. Of course, we're getting ready for uh, slightly. Can we talk softball? It's your show, Val. Uh, it's kind of j- weird. It's not okay. softball season, j- but it's your show. Is it ever not time to talk softball? We've got some news. Jason Coleman is going to be a volunteer assistant coach at Rochester. He is Jim Coleman's brother. Okay. And Billy Medina is going to be another volunteer assistant coach. He is coached uh, through the middle school level. And so uh, he is uh, knows these group of incoming freshmen very well. So he has been added to Jason Coleman's staff, or Jim Coleman's staff as well, along with Jason Coleman. Okay. And then Scott Hodeshell will also be back next year. So okay. I just wanted to... Uh, that was approved at the school board meeting on Tuesday, on, uh, Tuesday night or Monday night. So just wanted to get out, get, get that out there. So school board was Tuesday, or was it, or was it Monday? City council it was, it was Monday. Was Monday. 
it was earlier. It was earlier this week. One so, of the two. yeah. It's not so nice. yeah. So Rochester's got uh, a couple changes on the coaching staff with Scott Hodgeshell. We'll be back, and Jim Coleman will be back as head coach. So, okay. I want to get that softball note out of the way. Okay. Good deal. So a um, small game coming up here as we uh, finish up yeah. talking sports with Val. Uh, last thoughts on uh, on the Bell game coming up. I'm very, very curious to see if Rochester can get their passing game going against a very experienced Valley good, very good Valley secondary. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you talk about Wade Jones, he's one of the best safeties in the state, and I don't think I'm over exaggerating by saying mm-hmm. that he's one of the best safeties in the state. Uh, you know, but again, it's it's a kind of a again Valley's gap control defense is like nothing you that Rochester has faced in the last two years. Rochester had 106 yards rushing against Valley last year. Mm-hmm. They averaged 375 yards rushing per game in their other 11 games. And they almost they had, had 106 against Valley. They had 317 against Wabash last week rushing. So, yeah. can they get their rush can they get their rushing game going? Cuz again, Rochester's not going to mix it up a whole lot. They're not going to try and reinvent the wheel, we don't think. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think they had as many or almost as many uh, yards in penalties yeah, Valley did as uh, Rochester had rushing. Right. Another thing worth mentioning: Valley had eight penalties for ninety-three yards last week against right. Wallace. Sea. So and, and that they was, had been prone to penalties yeah. in the past, and they were prone to penalties last week. Yeah, and that, that was the if, thing you, were, almost, if you were at the game, and if you were in Syracuse last week, you know that game lasted for like two hours and forty-five minutes because they were throwing flags all night. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that could come into play, obviously, with the the special teams and and the the kicking ability that Valley has as far as field mm-hmm. goals go. I right. mean, if it comes down to a, a last kick, mm-hmm. and and Valley has an opportunity there, I mean, they seem to have uh, you know pretty good history with that already this mm-hmm. year. So um, yeah, I mean, the crowd just uh, you know I think it's going to be huge. I think it's mm-hmm. going to be basically standing room only for this one and. Uh, obviously, yeah. looking forward to you know the first time they played the Bell game in in Rochester for four years. I think the game time temperature should be around eighty or in the low eighties. I mean, not, that, as, yeah, not, not ideal, as bad. not ideal, but not as bad as we were fearing. No, for August, for August, especially after the way yeah. this week has been, that's going to be fine. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just really looking forward to this one, and should be a, should be a wonderful game here coming up. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, Wesley Meadows has been playing very well for Rochester on both sides. Tight end, catching a touchdown pass, but also impactful on defense. And how about Gavin Young, who had both a, he had a, a reception and an interception mm-hmm. last week. So he's been, he you know he's been playing well. I, I talked to some of the Rochester kids after the game, and they were like, "Yeah, we can get even better on defense." So yeah, but here's here's a big big test. You know, and and that's one of the things too is you talk about you know playing both ways. Rochester has more kids that are having to play both uh, both ways this year than they did last year, but Valley, even though they have 20 more kids on their their roster, they still have quite a few kids that go both ways. I mean, it's yeah. it's not like uh, they're they're going to have a huge advantage right. where Phil Smith goes both ways, Cameron Mason goes both ways, Dalton Albert goes both ways, Nate, Nate Parker goes both ways, Landon Durkis goes both ways, Wade Jones goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. Grady so. Mori- Grady Mori- Brock Durf goes both. Brock Durf and Grady Moriarty basically bo- go both ways. I mean, they, they might get a breather every now and then, but they yeah. basically go both yeah. ways. Yeah. So I think that part of it's going to be pretty even. It's you know, it's going to be a little warmer, but that's that's right. August football. You just right. got to stay hydrated, and you know, we may have a few. Do you think? You know, we we see sometimes those games in in the early part of the season where they have you know official timeouts where they do some hydration station type stuff. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll see some of that too. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, just a, a great thing. And the other thing, too, obviously, with the Bell game, first time uh, since it's been the Bell game, it's not a conference game. Yeah. You know, so that's that's got to factor in as well. Right. Back in, like, the early 80s, they, play, they played in week one, believe it or not, but that, yeah. was, that was before Rochester was in the right. TRC. So right. It's they were, not, they were in the, the NLC. Right, Rochester yeah. was in the NLC back yeah. then, and Valley was, was in the TRC, so... Mm-hmm. Now, Val, now Rochester's the only one of the, is the only one of the two that's in the TRC. So. Yeah, odd too because you know Valley has not been in any other conference uh, besides the TRC since it became a school, and we do have a new name, which isn't a new name for the new conference. Yeah, They're, it's be called the Northern State Conference, according to Angelo De Carlo of uh, WHME broke the news, so it's going to be called yeah. the Northern State Conference. So same same conference that uh, those schools besides Valley used to be in. Right, Before kind of they a, split up. Yeah, and, kind of like a nod to history to what John yeah, Lennon, yeah. Jim Town, and Bremen had. Yep, 
Yeah. And uh, Laville and Knox. And Laville we're and Knox, too. Yeah. 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 So it was it was all the schools uh, short of uh, Valley. We're in that yeah. NSC conference. Mm -hmm. All right. Bell game coming up next here on Channel 4 in Rochester, rtc4.com. Enjoy. <laughs>